Okay, today we are going to try to um, solve some equations. This is section 1.3 in our textbook. Uh, first, we're going to try to uh, do figure out the domain of a variable. Uh, we're also going to solve linear and quadratic equations. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about and discuss is what's legal. Now, you guys are familiar with the golden rule in math, and that's to do unto one side of an equation what you would do unto the other. So we can always add or subtract the same quantity on both sides of an equation. We can multiply or divide on both sides of the equation. Um, and we can also simplify an expression on either side of the equation that will produce equivalent equations. Now these steps are pretty easy, they've been ingrained in you, but it's really easy to make algebraic mistakes, so tomorrow I'll probably show you some common ones in class. Um, now I, I took a look and I made um, some equations here. I've got four examples here. Now in each case I have a variable in the denominator. That we're going to try to solve for x. I should have made that clear. So we're solving for x. And in each case, um, I have a uh, variable in the denominator. Actually, sorry, not in number three. Um, I'll let you guys do numbers three and four and check that with the answer key. So I'm only going to work out numbers one and two with you guys. Now, because you have a variable in the denominator, you're actually going to want to remove that variable and get it out of the denominator. Um, but first, let's talk about what the domain is. So in this case, since the domain, the variable is in the uh, domain, excuse me, the variable um, appears in the, in the denominator, um, we cannot have x equaling 0, okay? So no matter what, we can't have our denominator equal to 0. So we have all reals, our domain is all reals, except x cannot equal 0, okay? So what I'm going to do in this equation is turn this into an equivalent linear equation, one that is going to be an easy equation to solve. Right now it doesn't look that easy, but I can change it into a pretty basic one by multiplying by the common denominator of axb. So I'm going to be left with uh, xb minus ab equaling ab minus ax. Now, if you look over here, we've already completed step one, okay? And now our second step here is to collect the x's. Now, what I mean by that is collect your variables to one side. So in this case, um, my variables, xb um, and ax here, I want to move those terms to one side. So xb is going to stay, ax is going to be added over. I'm going to move now AB over the other side, and when I add it, I'm left up with 2AB. Now, step three is pretty crucial. Um, it's not necessary in every case, but here it is. We want to factor, so if we look, we have X, XB and AX, they have a common uh, factor of X, so I'm going to take that out and I'm left with X equaling B plus A. And now I can isolate the X pretty easily by dividing out that B plus A. So I am left with 2ab over b plus a. Okay, now similarly in question number two, I want to get rid of the denominator. Um, let's talk about uh, first, I'm sorry, the uh, domain. And the domain of this function is going to be all reals again, except ax, or I'm sorry, x cannot equal 1 over a or 1 over b. Okay, so in order to do that, we just set ax minus 1 equal to 0 and bx minus 1 equal to 0 and solve. Now, if I look, my common denominator here is going to be ax minus 1 times bx minus 1. And when I multiply that throughout, I'm left with b times uh, bx minus 1 minus a times ax minus 1 equaling still 0. When I distribute here, I'm left with b squared x minus b minus a squared x plus a equaling 0. And again, I'm going to follow our next step here, um, which is going to be to collect your x's. Okay, So if I collect my x's, um, that means b squared x and a squared x are going to stay put. And I will add the b and subtract the a over to the other side. Now, step 3 here tells me that I should factor. So I'm going to look over here, I'm going to factor out the x, and I'm left with x and b times b squared minus a squared equaling b minus a. Now if I want to isolate the x here, I can simply divide out. And I don't actually want to stop here, because if I notice this, I can actually uh, factor this difference of squares. So I'm left with b minus a over b minus a plus, or times b plus a. So I now factor and cancel those common factors, and I'm left with 1 over b plus a. 
Okay, I'd like you to try three and four, five and six also. Um, for five and six, these are literal equations, so you're not seeing any you know, integers here either, but um, just please follow these steps here and you should be okay. Now let's go to the next page on the back side here. We're gonna solve some quadratic equations. Now solving quadratic equations, um, there are four basic methods. Simple algebra, using usually the square root. Some people will call it the square root method. You can factor uh, the quadratic formula and completing the square. Uh, the first three questions here are all factoring questions. And uh, again, I think we're going to leave uh, number eight for you to do. I'll just give you a clue first. Distribute first, and then try to factor. Um, and number nine, the coefficient here, the lead coefficient is one. So you should still be able to factor this. It might just be a little bit uh, weird for you because it's not going to be integer values. But go ahead and check the answer key as well. So for number seven, I will do this one real quick because I want to uh, show you a very simple, uh, or I'm going to redo this problem basically later on. So let's do this real quick. Um, in order to factor this, I'm going to get zero on one side first. I'm going to pull out a GCF here. And on the inside, I have a pretty basic trinomial, lead coefficient of 1, and I'm left with this resulting equation once I factor. And that gives me solutions of x equaling 4 and negative 3. Okay. Now in numbers 10 and 11, we're going to use a couple different methods. In number 10, the easiest method here to use is going to be um, the algebraic method using square roots. So um, usually you can spot this because you're not going to have any um, linear term here. So I, I just have a quadratic term here that's been, uh, uh, it's an expression that's been squared. So I can isolate this pretty easily by just adding that 72 over to the other side. So a lot of students will, you know, waste time here by uh, foiling this out first. You don't need to do that. You can just simply move that 72 over to the other side, take the square root now of both sides. So I'm just going to simplify here. And I move over that negative 2, and I'm left with 2, oh, I'm sorry, 6 root 2. So, uh, x is going to equal negative 2, plus or minus 6 root 2. And in number 11, um, I have here, too, to use the quadratic formula. The reason why here you're using the quadratic formula is if you were to rewrite this in this, uh, your standard form here, uh, your lead coefficient, a, is not 1, okay? So you could try to split the middle term here, you can try to factor this, but the, it's, it's not factorable. There are no two numbers that will multiply to negative 20, but also add up to root 2. So, um, the, you know, if you can't quickly factor, use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is not something you want to use every single time, because obviously, like in number 10 and in number uh, 7 here, it was a much faster way, you know, much faster method to do. So. You don't always have to use the quadratic formula, but it will always work. So the quadratic formula here, I'm just going to introduce this really quick to you guys. Hopefully you have it already memorized. Um, but you'll do that problem on your own, and again, check that with the answer key. Okay, so we just um, discussed the quadratic formula, and now I want to actually derive it so you know where it comes from, and we can derive it by uh, completely... Okay, so the first thing I actually want to ask you is, um, if you look at this question here, you know, what method would you use and what would you do first? So think about that for a second. Now, I would use algebra to solve for this. I would subtract the 4, and then I would divide out that 2 in order to isolate the expression x minus 5 squared. And then I could square root. Now, even if I were to replace those variables, or replace those integers with variables, it still wouldn't change what I would do. You know, over here, the first step, subtract 4. Here, first step, subtract k. Then we divide it by 2, and then here we can divide by a. Hold on a sec while I yell at my dog. Okay, so the first thing I'm um, actually going to do is we're not going to use uh, completing the square to solve number 7. I'm going to change the problem, and we're going to complete the square to solve this quadratic here. Okay, we're going to follow the steps to the right as well in order to complete the square. So to complete the square, what you first want to do is move your constant. Okay, we're going to move our constant. It's actually not to the side with y, it's to the side with 0. So I subtract over my constant. And now I can take step 2, which is to factor out the quadratic coefficient. So in this case, 
the quadratic coefficient is that two here. So I'm gonna factor out the two, and I'm left with n squared plus six n equaling negative 10. Now, when I look at this, uh, my third step here says to take half of the linear coefficient and square it, okay? So that means I'm gonna look at the linear coefficient, which is this term here, the six. I take half of that, so half of six is three, and I'm gonna square it. I then add this number inside the parentheses. So I'm literally just following the directions here. So I have that two still on the outside, n squared plus six n in order to complete the square. So I'm creating a perfect square now. I square half of that six and gives me nine. So, so far this is what I have. Now if I left it like this, this would be incorrect because I haven't quite balanced my equation. Here I just changed from this step here to this step. I just added the number nine and I can't just go on and do that. I also don't wanna just add nine over here because I didn't actually add just nine. I actually added nine times two. So I added 18 to both sides. So over here, I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna add 18 here, okay? So now I can simplify and factor and I have two times n plus three squared equaling eight. So again, I'm just simplifying this whole term here and I get two times n plus three squared equaling eight. Now this looks a lot like an algebra problem that we could very easily solve. So what we're trying to do is turn any quadratic into a very simple algebraic you know, uh, question that we can uh, solve using simple algebra steps. So here I can just divide and then take the square root. And I end up with negative five and uh, Oh, I'm sorry, negative one. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna actually do is um, use the completing the square method to derive the formula um, for uh, the quadratic formula, okay? So look into the next video for that one because I don't have enough time left on this one. So bye-bye.